In Good Shape, your weekly dose of health information on Deutsche Welle. Find out more about what's new in medical treatment, alternative medicine, as well as nutrition, wellness, and beauty. Medical professionals, therapists, and counselors are in our studio to offer their expert advice on In Good Shape. With me in the studio today is an expert on the medical use of cannabis. Let me welcome Professor Markus Lewicke. He's a psychiatrist at the Mannheim Central Institute of Mental Health and he's been doing research on cannabis for nearly 20 years now. Welcome to In Good Shape, Professor. Hello. What effect does cannabis has on the body uh, in, for pain medication? Um, for pain, it's uh, an interesting effect. It's basically that we have... Um, two fats, basically, two classes of fats. Um, the one that actually induces peripheral pain, and uh, we just learned that there's the other class that includes uh, um, endogenous cannabinoids um, that basically counterbalance the uh, um, uh, effect of uh, the bad fats. Mm -hmm. So you could use cannabis as a drug there for, uh, to, to, to get a better pain, and <clears throat> could you even just smoke a joint? Um, smoking a joint is, um, is a bit critical in my view. Um, there's one aspect that you have to keep in mind. Um, the cannabis plant contains more than 70 different cannabinoids. So it's not only uh, THC, the constituent that makes you um, high. It, uh, there are other compounds and the, um, the distribution of these compounds within the plant is basically uh, dependent from type of plant, growing conditions, and so on. So if you um, smoke pot for medical purposes, you probably don't see the same effect each time because uh, um, uh, the ingredients are different. Mm -hmm. Okay, And it's not only used for pain, actually. So what afflictions does cannabis help especially well? Um, the body's endogenous cannabinoid system is basically widely distributed. There are a lot of um, systems in the body that uh, use this system or this uh, endo uh, endocannabinoid system to um, uh, get back into homeostasis, which means it brings you back to resting state. So um, having that said, it's basically that you see a lot of disorders where the endocannabinoid system plays a role. And because you target the endocannabinoid system by exogenous cannabinoids, plant-derived cannabinoids or synthetic ones, uh, you basically can um, uh, address uh, um, a whole lot of uh, diseases like uh, epilepsy, um, even tumors. And doctors do give the cannabis as pills or as, um, as shots? Or how, how do you administer it? To in, in Germany, it's, uh, it's prescribable as um, a kind of capsule. Um, it's either marinol, which is um, delta 9 THC, uh, the one compound um, uh, in pure form. Um, or you can, uh, or even the pharmacist may prepare these capsules for you. And there's a second, um, uh, or there are two other ways uh, to prescribe it. So one is uh, nabiximols, which is um, a mixture of cannabidiol, the uh, counter player of THC in the plant, uh, and THC, so it's one to one. And there's also a synthetic um, cannabinoid derivative um, that you can use for, um, um, uh, to prevent vomiting after chemotherapy, which is uh, nabilone. What about the risk of addiction uh, to those tablets? Um, this is an addictive compound. Mm -hmm. So delta-9 THC um, carries a risk of addiction, but I think in a medical context, you have to keep in mind there's also a, um, a large um, risk of addiction for opioids. And yeah. they're widely used in a medical context. And, um, but it needs to be controlled by the exactly. doctors to prescribe it. Exactly. Professor Levicke, you were the first physician in the world who used cannabis for the treatment of schizophrenic patients. Um, how many patients benefited? Uh, first, I would like to say we didn't use cannabis. Mm -hmm. We just used the purified um, cannabidiol, one of the main ingredients. And as I said, this is a counter player of Delta 9 THC, the compound that actually induces psychotic symptoms. So um, this is important to make the, um, the difference. It's not cannabis because cannabis is harmful in schizophrenia. Um, the majority of studies point to this direction. It increases the risk to suffer schizophrenia. And um, 
we actually tried to avoid these effects and just used one single compound uh, to uh, induce um, a certain effect that we expected. So you, you would not in any um, circumstances recommend some patients with schizophrenia to smoke some pot? To get cured? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> okay. So, so, and why are those natural substances you used better than those um, established medication you can usually get from your doctor? I don't know if they are really better because um, the number of patients that we have treated is too small to really say it's superior or it's equal. Um, a lot more studies are needed and we are just performing um, a, a large-scale European uh, clinical trial using cannabidiol in early schizophrenia. Um, which is in, within the first three years and in uh, acute stages. Um, and this is funded by the European um, Commission. So um, we definitely need to have more information available on this point. Um, but um, on the other hand, um, this is just a new mechanism of action. So conventional compounds use certain mechanisms of action and certain patients don't respond to this. Mm -hmm. And we use a different mechanism and this is uh, um, uh, the, the, the basic thing that makes it special. Mm -hmm. There's a study that shows that cannabis may even help in patients with Alzheimer's diseases. Very promising. What do you think about that? Um, I, I think because the system is so... Um, important to, uh, to um, remain homeostasis in the body. Um, it's highly likely that it's also uh, activated uh, during Alzheimer's and um, this may be a promising target that we haven't addressed yet. And we have to see if this is really um, uh, something that holds up in, in larger studies. Mm -hmm. So this is all very interesting, very, very new. What is in the pipeline for cannabis in the next decade, say? Um, there are several approaches. Basically, the one is a plant-derived material to look into um, specific compounds of the plant, but there are also synthetic um, uh, cannabinoid modulators um, that induce certain effects. Some of them even don't cause a blood-brain barrier, uh, so the effect is limited to the periphery, and um, uh, this is, uh, in, under certain circumstances, very useful if you want to avoid the uh, central nervous side effects. Yeah. A lot of research to be done. Thank you, Professor Levicke, for being with us in the studio. Thank you Thank so you. much.